Hi everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss how fexofenadine acts in allergy. We will see the mechanism of action, side effects and uses of fexofenadine. Fexofenadine is one of the drug which is well known by its brand name Allegra. This drug is an antihistamine. It can be used in the treatment of allergic rhinitis. Allergic rhinitis is also called as hay fever and this condition can produce few of the symptoms like the runny nose, itching, watery eyes, sneezing and congestion which results in the difficulty in breathing. All these are observed because of the allergic reactions in the patients. All these symptoms can be observed because of the release of one mediator that is the histamine. Now the actions of the histamine can be blocked by fexofenadine which acts as an antihistamine. And this drug can also be used in the other condition like the chronic idiopathic urticaria which is again one of the allergic condition which produce some skin irritation, itching and allergy. In such conditions we can use the fexofenadine. Now today in this video let us see how this fexofenadine acts and how it can block the actions of the histamine. First of all let us see the structure of the fexofenadine. We can observe one of the phenyl group here and another phenyl group here. These two phenyl groups are attached to the methane group. So fexofenadine belongs to the chemical category of diphenylmethanes. Among the antihistamines we have several chemical categories but the fexofenadine belongs to the diphenylmethanes. And we are well familiar with one of the first generation diphenylmethane drug that is the diphenhydramine. Diphenhydramine is present in many of these syrups as well as the tablets as an antihistamine. And it is well known with the brand name Benadryl. But this drug is having so many side effects because it can easily enter into the CNS. Thereby it can produce the sedation, drowsiness, dizziness in the patients. But the fexofenadine is a second generation diphenylmethane which is not entering into the CNS. Thereby this drug shows less sedation. Let us see another structure. This is not the fexofenadine, this is the another drug, terfenadine. Terfenadine is a related drug to the fexofenadine. When this drug is administered within the body, this drug can be converted into another structure like this and this is nothing but the fexofenadine. In this way, terfenadine is metabolized to the fexofenadine. You can observe a small difference between the terfenadine and the fexofenadine. In the terfenadine, methyl group is present at this position. But in the fexofenadine, we can observe a COOH group. Carboxylic acid group is present in the fexofenadine. So simply in this reaction, terfenadine is converted into fexofenadine by oxidation reaction. But the terfenadine is one of the drugs which can increase the QT interval within the ECG, which produce a fatal cardiac arrhythmias, what we call torse de pointis. This is a fatal side effect. That's why terfenadine is withdrawn from the market because of the torse de pointis. But still fexofenadine is available in the market, which is not having significant increase in the QT interval. So it is not producing torse de pointis. But still this drug should be carefully given in the patients who are at the risk of the increase in the QT intervals. How it acts? All we have seen the fexofenadine is an antihistamine or it is an anti-allergic drug. So this drug is mainly reducing the allergic response. Allergens can act as antigens so that they are going to release the histamine from the mast cells, basophils as well as eosinophils. And this histamine can act on the H1 receptors which are responsible for the allergic response. Now the fexofenadine can block this H1 receptor selectively thereby it can inhibit the actions of the histamine. But now let us see how this allergen can release the histamine and how this histamine can act on the H1 receptors to produce the allergic response. First of all let us see the release of the histamine. The allergens can act as the antigens so that they can bind to the antigen presenting cells. So when this antigen binds to this antigen presenting cells they will activate these cells and once they are going to be bound these antigens can be internalized within the antigen presenting cells and then they can undergo fragmentation such that they are going to release one of the complement related to the antigen. Now this complement can be recognized by 
MHC2 molecules which are expressed on the antigen presenting cells. Now this antigen fragment is going to be expressed with the MHC2 molecules. This fragment is recognized by CD4 T cells. Once the CD4 T cells recognize this antigen fragment, they can stimulate the TH2 lymphocytes. These TH2 lymphocytes are mainly responsible for the release of the interleukins and by this they can convert the plasma cells into the B cells. B cells are very important for release of the antibodies. So because of the activation of the B cells they are going to release the antibodies and one of the important antibodies is the IgE antibody. Immunoglobulin E. Now this IgE can act on the different types of cells like the mast cells and eosinophils so that it can release the histamine. Now the mast cells are equipped with the different types of mediators and one of the important mediator is the histamine. And in order to degranulate the histamine, they are going to express few of the binding proteins which are the FC sigma R binding proteins on which the Ig antibodies can act. Now this Ig antibodies can bind to the mast cells. Now when this antigen is going to interact with these antibodies, the mast cells can undergo the degranulation and they release the histamine. This histamine is responsible for the allergic response. Histamine can act through the histamine receptors in order to show the allergic response but we have different types of histamine receptors. They can be classified from H1 to H4. The important one are the H1 receptors and H2 receptors. H1 receptors are mainly present in the lungs, nasal mucosa, endothelium, neurons, gastric mucosa, lymphocytes. At all of these locations the H1 receptors are present which are responsible for the itching, bronchodilatation, vasodilatation and salivation. All these are the allergic response produced by histamine through the H1 receptors. And histamine can also act through the H2 receptors which are present at the gastric mucosa, heart, lungs and CNS. And when these receptors are activated they can increase the gastric acid secretion because the histamine can act through the gastric parietal cells as well as it can also produce a cardiac stimulation. But here the allergic response is mediated by H1 receptors. So now the fexofenadine acts on the H1 receptors. At many of the cells the H1 receptors are going to be expressed and these H1 receptors are the 7 transmembrane G protein coupled receptors. Now when the histamine is going to acting on the H1 receptors they are going to be activated and since they are the G protein coupled receptors they are going to activate the phospholipase C system. This phospholipase C is the cleavage enzyme which can cleave the phosphatidyl inositol biphosphate into the two fragments. One of the fragment is the IP3 inositol triphosphate and another fragment is the DAG diacylglycerol. Now this IP3 and DAG are the two important secondary messengers which are, which are released by action of the histamine. IP3 can act on the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Sarcoplasmic reticulum express via the ion channels which are the store operated calcium channels. These ion channels are the target for the IP3 so they can also be called as IP3 receptors. Now when this IP3 acts on this IP3 receptors it can cause the release of the calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Similarly the diacylglycerol can attach with the cell membrane and it can activate the one of the enzymes protein kinase C. When this protein kinase C is going to be activated it can stimulate the entry of the calcium through the calcium channels expressed on the cell membrane. Now because of the protein kinase C the calcium can more enter into the cell so that the intracellular calcium levels are going to be increased. In this way histamine can increase the intracellular calcium levels and as the calcium is going to be increased it can increase the contraction. For example within the lungs it can produce a bronchoconstriction which produce some congestion and difficulty in breathing. At the same time the increased intracellular calcium can increase the release of the nitric oxide within the endothelium. Now this nitric oxide can produce the vasodilatation within the vascular smooth muscle. In this way histamine can produce the contraction of the bronchial smooth muscle. At the same time it can produce the relaxation of the vascular smooth muscle and this vasodilatation can increase the allergic response by increasing the vascular permeability. So so many mediators can enter into the blood vessels so that the inflammatory response can be increased.
Now let us see how phexophenadin acts. Phexophenadin is selectively blocking the H1 receptors so that these receptors are going to be inhibited. Thereby histamine cannot produce any action through the H1 receptors. In this way, phexophenadin is a selective H1 antagonist. Thereby it inhibits the allergic reactions mediated by histamine. Now let us see the side effects of the phexophenadin. The one of the important side effect is the headache that can be observed in many of the patients. And apart from this side effect, phexophenadine can also produce dry mouth, stomach pain and some dizziness in the patient. And very rarely phexophenadine can also induce the fever in the patients. Drug interactions. Phexophenadine undergoes somewhat less metabolism and uh, its metabolism is going to be mediated by cytochrome P450 system. When the phexophenadine is given with the other drugs like the erythromycin, ketoconazole, these type of drugs can inhibit this metabolism of the phexophenadine, thereby they can increase the levels of the phexophenadine within the body. This may lead to the toxicity of the phexophenadine, that's why these type of drugs should be carefully given with the phexophenadine. And even antacids can decrease the absorption of the phexophenadine. Interestingly, one more food drug interaction is with the grapefruit juice. Grapefruit juice can inhibit the metabolism of the phexophenadine, thereby it can increase the levels of this drug, which may increase the QT interval within the ECG. That's why this drug is not recommended along with the grapefruit juice in order to avoid this uh, unwanted drug interaction. How it is given? Phexophenadine is given as a tablet form at a dose of uh, 30 mg, 60 mg and 180 mg. And it is also available as a capsule and this capsule is available at the 60 mg dose. And it can also be given as a oral suspension. This oral suspension is uh, available at a dose of 30 mg per 5 ml. The dose of the phexophenadine depends on the allergic condition and age of the patient. It can be given as a twice daily formulation where it is given at a dose of 60 mg given twice daily. So the maximum dose is 120 mg. Otherwise it can be given as single dose where 180 mg of the phexophenadine is given. And the suspension can be given at a 30 mg dose twice daily so that the maximum dose is the 60 mg. So that's about the phexophenadine which is well known as Allegra. Phexophenadine is a select 2 H1 antagonist with less sedation and drowsiness compared with the first generation antihistamines. So that's for today. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.